Seek nothing outside of yourself. There is no doubt that Miyamoto Musashi is one of the greatest samurais in history. His unparalleled achievements in swordsmanship weren't just a result of natural talent, but a testament to his unwavering discipline. According to his own writings, it was this very discipline that carved his path to greatness. Musashi's first duel was when he was just 13 years old, which he won. After this, he remained undefeated for over 60 duels, even now, in the modern day. This record still stands as one of the most historic achievements of all time. Miyamoto Musashi wasn't just the best samurai ever in Japan, but also he was an artist and thinker. His life serves as a compelling example of how self-discipline can be a game-changer. Without it, we're like rudderless ships, easily swayed by the currents of impulse and immediate gratification. Musashi saw self-discipline as more than a tool for achievement. It was a shield against suffering. When we're disciplined, we're better equipped to handle life's challenges and surprises. So with that in mind, in this video we'll explore Miyamoto Musashi's teachings for superior self-discipline and how they can be practically applied in our daily lives. Accept everything just the way it is. Musashi's life as a samurai was filled with uncertainties, from the outcomes of duels to the transient nature of his lifestyle. For him, acceptance wasn't a passive act, but a form of discipline. It meant acknowledging the reality of each moment, whether it was a life-threatening duel or a peaceful day of writing. This perception isn't just for samurais facing life or death situations. It's a principle that can be applied to the challenges we encounter every day. For example, imagine you're driving to an important meeting and your car suddenly breaks down. The immediate reaction for many of us might be to ask, why is this happening to me? Or even to curse our bad luck, thereby adding unnecessary suffering to the situation. But what Musashi suggests, instead of labeling the situation as bad and spiraling into frustration, a disciplined person sees it for what it is. The car stopped working and it needs fixing. The focus then quickly turns to finding solutions, like calling for a tow truck or notifying the people waiting for you and figuring out how to resolve the situation. This principle aligns closely with the Stoic philosophy which Epictetus encapsulated in his famous quote, We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. The idea is straightforward yet profound. We may not have control over what happens to us, but we do have control over how we react. Musashi also offers a compelling perspective on how we perceive events cautioning us against labeling them as good or bad. He argues that these labels are not inherent qualities of the events themselves, but rather mental constructs that we, as observers, impose upon them. So when we adopt a disciplined mindset, we free ourselves from these limiting judgments. Do not regret what you have done. Guilt can be a helpful emotion. It's like a signal that alerts us when we've crossed an ethical line. For instance, if you've said something rude and hurt someone, feeling guilty is natural and even constructive. It shows you care about the impact of your actions and offers a chance for self-correction. Sometimes many of us confuse the feeling of guilt and regret. Even though each of them serves different functions, guilt is an emotional response that provides useful information, helping us adjust our behavior for the future. Regret, on the other hand, is a mental state that doesn't serve us well. It's like a cloud that hovers over our thoughts, taking up valuable mental space and hindering discipline. Miyamoto Musashi didn't have the luxury to dwell on regret. He had to focus on the present moment and the actions that would keep him alive. That's why he emphasized the importance of a clear mind for effective decision-making something that regret can severely compromise. To maintain discipline, it's crucial to keep our minds free from distractions. Regret is one such distraction. Whether you've blown your savings on a risky investment or pull it an all-nighter playing video games, 
and missaid an important class or work meet, regret won't help you fix any of these situations. Instead of getting stuck in a cycle of regret, which often leads to feelings of helplessness, we should focus on taking proactive steps to remedy the situation. It's okay to make mistakes and learn from them. What's not okay is to let those mistakes turn into a pit of regret. We should aim to learn, improve, and move forward. Be indifferent to where you live. For Musashi, the location was secondary to the discipline and mindset he carried within himself. Whether he was in a peaceful temple or a chaotic battlefield, his inner state remained unshaken. Many of us might believe that a simple change of location will magically solve all our problems, leading to a happily ever after scenario. But Musashi is challenging this common notion and urging us to understand that the key to contentment isn't tied to a specific location. It's more about our mindset and how you engage with life. Happiness at its core is an internal state of mind. Sure, a new place might offer a temporary boost in mood, but if you're not fundamentally content or aligned with your life's purpose, that initial happiness will likely fade. Eventually, you'll find yourself back at square one. This echoes the words of Confucius who said, no matter where you go, there you are. Musashi also prepares us for life's unpredictability. If we're on a path of self-improvement or seeking mastery in any field, we might end up in places we never saw coming. Maybe we'll find ourselves in a different country, adjusting to a new way of life, or even learning to navigate on familiar cultures. These changes go beyond just our physical location. They're tests of our mental and emotional strength. So instead of focusing on where we are, Musashi proposes that we should consider how we are. Are we adaptable, resilient, and committed to our goals? These are the qualities that will help us thrive, no matter where life takes us. To know 10,000 things, know one well. In today's world, we're faced with an overwhelming number of career paths and endless options. It's common to feel drawn to multiple interests, whether it's sports, computers, or art, leading us to dabble in various fields. Having a wide range of interests isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, this can sometimes lead to what's known as the shiny object syndrome, where people jump from one new and trendy idea to another, abandoning each as soon as something else catches their eye. He devoted his life to mastering the art of the sword. Day in and day out, he trained restlessly. However, it's easy to forget that he was also an accomplished artist, a cerebral philosopher and a master strategist. With this, we can argue that knowing one way doesn't mean limiting yourself to one pursuit. It emphasizes the importance of focused discipline in mastering one thing at a time and dedicating our full time and attention to this one thing. Until we master it, by doing so, we now know one way. So by extensively learning a skill and experiencing the entirety of what that is, we start seeing patterns which will help us learn other skills as well. In Miyamoto's case, his strategy was largely based on the patterns he learned from dueling his opponents and applying them on a larger scale. In modern days, this can be illustrated by the resilience we gain by learning how to be adaptable in anything we do. It's the ability to learn how to learn. If you know how to study for one exam, you'll know how to study for the rest. Or if you know how to adapt in the workplace, you'll be able to handle any task you're assigned to. But it all starts with learning one way first, so that you can later know a thousand. Never let yourself be saddened by a separation. Considering that Musashi was a samurai, a warrior who've always faced life or death situations, this principle likely held significant weight in his own life. Separations are a natural and unavoidable part of being human. Whether it's the loss of a loved one, moving to a new place, or simply taking different paths in life, these moments of separation will come. For example, imagine you have to move to a different city to chase a career opportunity or to follow a dream. In this case, you'll be leaving behind friends and family, which is tough. 
But according to Musashi, the discipline lies in managing those emotions, acknowledging the sadness, but not letting it deter you from your path. The concept of separation also extends to material possessions. Let's say you're attached to your car or your smartphone. If these items were taken away, would you lose your sense of self? Musashi warns against such attachments, suggesting that they can become a form of emotional bondage. The discipline here is in the detachment, in understanding that while you can enjoy things, they shouldn't own you emotionally. Never be jealous. You might be thinking, what's the connection between jealousy and discipline? Well, Musashi's teachings often target the barriers that prevent us from being disciplined, and jealousy is definitely one of them. Let's say you're scrolling through social media and see a friend who's just landed a dream job or is traveling to exotic places. It's easy to feel a pang of jealousy, thinking you're missing out or not achieving enough. Jealousy distracts you from focusing on your own path and self-improvement. Imagine if Musashi had spent his time being jealous of other swordsmen. Would he have become the legendary warrior we know today? Highly unlikely. In the samurai world, where life and death were separated by the thinnest of margins, there was no room for such distractions. Musashi focused on honing his own skills, perfecting his art, and understanding his own strengths and weaknesses. Jealousy would have been a waste of precious time and energy, resources that he could otherwise invest in, becoming the best version of himself. And just like Musashi, you can't afford to squander your focus and allow yourself to get distracted by what others are doing. Especially in the age of social media, maintaining our discipline is more crucial than ever. So when jealousy tries to divert your attention, Remember Musashi's unwavering focus and commitment to his craft. Use that as fuel to invest in yourself and to become the greatest samurai in your own field.